Good morning, distinguished colleagues. I suggest we start our session. Thank you very much for visiting us here. I'm very happy to see you all. And uh, let me start our session with the uh, with the presenting the agenda. First of all, we will do some introductory presentations. What we're talking about, smart cities, experience, structure. And after that, we will do the panel discussion with our speakers. And then there will be a few minutes for questions and answers. You will be able to answer, to ask of any of the speakers. So the topic of our discussion is smart cities. What's happening to the smart cities, how they are built, what are the prospects of their development, what is there for us in future, and what will happen in uh, a few years. Let me introduce the speakers of today. Alexander Garbatko, Deputy Head of the Information Technology Department of uh, Moscow, responsible for the development of the communications and broadcasting and the development of and implementation of the information city program and many other issues of information technology development for Moscow city. Kwanishbek uh, Yesikeev, chairman of the board of the largest Kazakhstan communications operator, multi-service operator. Jonathan Sparrow, Vice President of Cisco in Russia and the CIS. Cisco is uh, the world leader in information technologies and networks for smart cities. Hazem Galel, global partner of PwC, one of the world's largest consulting companies. And Mr. Galal is specializing on issues of smart cities and developing telecommunication technologies. Jana Dubirova, who is the head of the city center of, of uh, uh, responding, ICONX 109, and Aidar of Almaz, deputy head of Akim of Karaganda Oblast. So all the issues of digitalization related to him in Karaganda city. In a nutshell, what's happening now with smart cities, how they work? and uh, what's happening with them currently. So that we define what we talk about, I would like to start with the definition. And the easiest is just to tell you about the verticals that are now exist in smart cities. When we say smart city, it doesn't mean just some abstract thing. There are some specific solutions of a digitalization of utilities when people don't have to carry their papers and uh, for the metering and pay for that. So this is all digitally automatically transmitted. When there are electronic systems, automatic systems that control the, the use of electricity, leakages of water, when uh, there is a system of early detection that some of some equipment is not in the best of its working condition, and there are some uh, threats of it uh, to be out of order soon. So it's better to do maintenance. Smart cities is the technologies that um, assist uh, communication between systems of the city, between uh, the mayor, mayor office and the management, and the uh, citizens can do the voting and make appointments with the doctors and place their children to kindergarten, just pressing a few buttons. Smart city is the safety system when uh, a CCTV city is uh, tracking the movement of uh, citizens and uh, tracking down potential uh, perpetrators, or when there is a system of sensors does not enable uh, citizens does not allow citizens to do some uh, the smallest uh, crimes. One of the examples of such uh, novelties Paris is uh, playing with, I would like to say, playing with, with the systems. If uh, a pedestrian is crossing on the red line, there will be a, a sound of a car breaking. So uh, the pedestrian will be scared and he just sees what can happen theoretically, but the purpose is not to scare, but to show that he should not cross on the red line. 
and the, the billboard showing the photograph of a pedestrian when he was scared, and there is a text that he should not cross on red light. So this is like a humorous example of a smart city. And of course, the main purpose is to make the communication easier and make life as comfortable as possible when you don't have to do some operational things, uh, uncomfortable things. Uh, to pay, for example, for your apartment, find a parking lot, and uh, find time, uh, working time of some government agency. As for the structure of the service, it is quite simple. In the bottom of uh, the slide, we see the sensors. They are installed just simply and uh, just installed in the right position. And we have uh, radio communication systems that control the sensors. And we have an important database that collects all the information, visualizes and processes it, and then sends it to the management body, for example, to the mayor office. Or in Kazakhstan, this is Akimat, that can uh, view that, analyze, and make decisions. How this happening in practice, uh, the Rome was not built uh, one and one day. So when we say how this all should be working, at least uh, of the European experience, if we talk about the need is always uh, with the client. It's always, and then it is uh, trans. If we talk about Kazakhstan, I think Akimat will be that organization that can formulate the need and define the most important aspects of digitalization that will be needed in the nearest future. But uh, uh, this time is needed for that, so some laboratory tests are needed. We do some short pilot research. For example, we get one street and install uh, smart lighting at one street or one micro district and we install smart lighting or smart water metering. So when the pilot shows its uh, efficiency and in 85 percent of cases it's already evident in the first few months. But of course there are some pilots that can show the efficiency later. And as soon as we see that the pilot is working well, this is all projected uh, and uh, scaled up to other parts of the city and other cities of the country. Talking about the technological part, about five years ago, there was a whole zoo. Nobody would understand which technology should be used and how this should be done better. So when we see now in the US and the, in the European Union uh, and the Moscow experience, technology for the city is not the most critical element. The city is the client that buys services, that does not buy technologies. And the technologists decided that technology will supplement each other. There are some parts of technologies that are now in the left part of the screen. This is what is used for smart home and on the right part of the screen that work for the smart city. They are not competing. They were competing about five years ago. Now, many operators engaged in smart cities development, they understand that technologies should supplement each other, help each other, and provide the service that is needed for um, people. When we talk about services, let me give you some examples what we are now launching. So this is one of the examples when the the Shanghai mayor office decided to do a pilot and to improve the population city in the city. There is a hard situation with traffic jams and pollution. So any tourist can feel it immediately. As soon as he boards off a plane, he feels. Of course, when you breathe, you can feel it that you have just maybe smoked two cigarettes. So the environmental issues are the most uh, urgent issues for the city. And according to the mayor's office recommendations, they had a 
one of the largest pilots all over the world, over 200,000 sensors connected and powering a wide range of smart city applications. So these were the environmental centers to monitor pollution and quality of water in rivers. So the first focus was on parents, because mainly parents are worried about their children. And parents wanted to see not just the video cameras, how the classes are going on, but they wanted to see the information about the temperature uh, so that children are not cold or hot and the CO2 content in the classrooms. So this pilot was doing this work and now any parent can easily see the air quality at the school premises and uh, at home premises. A similar pilot was done in uh, Australia. They were mainly concerned about strong winds and the wind pivots, it's, they can bring lots of dust to the city. And Europe is not behind from Asian cities. And one of the examples that we, we did with Vinci, Vinci is an operator of water supply for all French cities. And uh, Vinci decided that they would like to cut their costs for water and cut water losses, because even in European countries, such losses are up to 10% of the water traffic. And so Vinci uh, last month launched a project. There will be about 3 million sensors installed under the project. An important issue is the role that is played by Kazakh Telecom in the digitalization. Why this is all done at the city? You now see the major uh, figures that show the efficiency of smart cities installment. And if we talk about results, even the first figure that shows that that uh, the digital safety system actually helps to save 300 lives per a million of people. So this is enough already to launch the digitalization, make it a priority. But there is also economics. The statistics in uh, European cities, a smart lighting saves about 60% of uh, the city costs on lighting. So the lighting at night, if there are no people, it uh, makes the light dim. If it sees uh, uh, a car, it uh, puts on the light on all the street. And if there is a pedestrian, they put the light on the nearest 300 meters. And as for the water use, in those EU systems where we introduced the smart water use systems, we can see that the water consumption decreased by up to 60 liters per person. So five buckets of water is used less than before. This is a great financial result that can be very important for its city. There is a really good savings of resources. And if we talk not about abstract things, but about the financial situation for the city with 3 million people, on average, smart city will bring uh, the revenue of $53 million per year. This is the practice that we are just going to see in some European cities. And that was confirmed not only by theoretical estimations, but by practical figures. An important stage is uh, what Kazakhstan is doing in digitalization. Kazakh Telecom is doing a lot here that made it possible that in all CIS countries, Kazakhstan is second in uh, developing digitalization. Uh, last year, three major cities were covered. and. Uh, the infrastructure was developed for a smart city. This is Almaty, Astana, and Shimkent. And this year, uh, it plans to cover 16 more cities. So the rate of 
growth is quite big. Knowing about other statistics of other CS countries, we can see that second position is uh, very much ahead than the, the third. What is important that we have chosen the right strategy of digitalization, because if we look at the world trends that we can see that the growth will be quite fast, that out of all the services that are now developing actively, we can see that digitalization is the major international trend of uh, IoT development. Uh, so digitalization is the area that gets the major investment, that gets the major focus from suppliers and the mayor's offices. And what is expected by people in the cities to improve their living standards. Speaking of the detail, speaking of cities in detail, the traffic takes the most important place for the citizens. When we ask big cities, what's the biggest problem? They say we are fed up with the traffic jams. Sometimes it's the light. Sometimes we have to. Uh, write down the numbers from our water meters. We're used to that. But the traffic increases all the time, and the people are worried about that. So optimization with the city traffic, it gives economy to life. So it, it will allow people to save time. The bigger the city, the more time a person spends in traffic. I would call that a problem with transportation for uh, drivers it's a problem for people for citizens uh, it's a problem when they wait for a bus they don't know whether the bus will come or not maybe it will come in 15 minutes but actually it will not come in 15 minutes but the data it's not taken from the bus itself it's the data from some de database and it's uh, these data is stationary, so Paris administration was blamed that on electronic board they just uh, the numbers that they gave they were wrong. So there is no a point in that digitalization. So there was a scandal, and the administration apologized. They said it was temporary, and th then they. Uh, installed some sensors on the bus. So when you now look at the board, uh, arrival board, these are the uh, data taken from the bus directly. Very important place uh, is about lighting. When we talk about uh, income from lighting, it will grow. These data were just numbers for me on paper, but these are McKinsey numbers, and they mean a lot. But first time we tried these numbers in Amsterdam, in the suburbs of uh, Amsterdam, we did a pilot version of the project. They said that they repaired their lighting uh, li light lines, and they didn't want us to intervene. But we have suburb suburb so you can test on the mouse so to speak on mice so to speak so they saved 60 percent of the energy cost and the NPS factor that they uh, looked at in terms of how the population felt from this innovation and it showed a very significant uh, significant better attitude towards the administration from the people. So because the light people see when they leave their houses, they see that the money, where the money is going. But when when they leave the house, they see then with the innovation that only the, the, the part that lights up is where they are situated. And then there is smart parking. Smart parking will generate a lot of money and in Almaty or Astana there are places where you can park for free in Europe there are, there are, there are none you can uh, have free parking only in the 
area near your house. If you go to the city, it will be paid. It can cost uh, a lot. It can cost a little if you decided to park in, in downtown. But the parking gives a lot of money to the city. So the now city is thinking about the budget uh, that it can get from the parking fees. According to McKinsey, $3.6 billion will be generated by smart parking by 2023. So in about three years, these are this is a big number. And then there is a service related to security. It will generate a little less, $2 billion. The main indicators of security you see on the chart, and you will see the reduction in criminal level. The um, responsiveness levels, uh, like ambulances, when so the the way how you do it, for example, it's very important uh, how quickly ambulance will get to the house, for example, and this will increase the chances of a patient to survive in, a, in an emergency. I think that's it uh, in terms of numbers. S to sum up, I would like to say that the expectation and predictions that were made in terms of growth of uh, digital cities, they're starting to uh, be become true. There were some mistakes, but mistakes were to do with uh, with uh, expectations because it's hard to measure uh, the temperature in all hospitals, in all cities. So because every city has its own features, in some cities parking is important, in another city other questions, for example, automation of uh, communal services are important. As for the trends, we see the growth of internet, growth of investments, smart cities is defined by the investments. All these predictions, McKinsey and other agencies were correct. And this trend continues into today. And this is proven by the pilot projects that we have already launched in our cities. However, theory is a cool thing, but I would like to get into practice to get to more interesting things. And uh, I would like to find out if we can uh, try them in practice. Alexander, I have a question to you to, as a person who already built, who built with his hands all of that in his city. According to your opinion, how digitalization uh, simplified the lives of Moscovites and in terms of management in Moscow? Hello, everybody. Thank you for the question. Moscow has become the leading city and is competing with the uh, largest cities in the world. Uh, last year, according to UN, Moscow became the first in terms of digitalization of electronic government. It's not just the government, it's the digitalization. So what is a smart city? It's a smart city that is comfortable for living. What, who is a citizen of the city? The cities are becoming bigger, and the main resources of the city are the people, citizens. They live, go to work, they drive revenues. This is a big ecosystem that helps us introduce electronic service, simplifying the lives of Moscovites, and giving opportunity to citizens to spend more time, not on some routine, man mundane things, but on uh, improving on their education skills, the companies that are investing in Moscow, they like to work there, it's a good direction for them. Electronic services that simplify the life, simplify the investments, and uh, they help Moscow grow economically. Uh, convenience of work in Moscow, the service that is provided 
that is aimed at simplifying the process of business and each employee of the company allows to attract a lot of investments and grow commercial companies in Moscow. So what should be the driver who decides what the city needs? It's not a simple question. In Moscow, there are many departments. One of the central departments for Moscow where I work is the Department of Informational, Information Technologies. More than 2,000 employees who invent and implement on a daily basis information services in the city, three directions, citizens, business, and digitiz digitalization. Are there any metrics, measurements to measure the effectiveness when you implement a service? For example, you implemented a new service for Moscow. How do you measure that? Do you measure some consumers' reactions? Uh, do you, uh, how to measure the effectiveness or to invest it? It's very important. There are, there are electronic services. These are big costs, big expenses for the cities, but these expenses help Moscovites live with more comfort in the city, and the city makes money. The more people work, the more the city will earn. There are indicators, and it's not technological, they're functional indicators for example system of surveillance it's not a number of cameras we have 170,000 cameras in all entrances in all neighborhoods but it's also the indicator of how clean the city is how the how quickly the, tr the trash is uh, taken out so which allows to effectively control this system also uh, organization of traffic, for example, this system, it, it is aimed not at a number of sensors, it's about the safety of traffic, the speed of transportation, of m speed of movements of citizens of transports uh, from the moment he wakes up and gets to work. And so these indicators of effectiveness of businesses. If we look at organizational structure of those those services that are present in Russia, how do you see this structure? Do you see each region doing what it needs and implement, or do you see this structure more as a centralized? According to your experience, what was the administra what was the administrative structure for Moscow? Moscow is a twelve million city also for the there are people who come to moscow to work all models are centralized in moscow there is a centralized department that define the define the policies and services that come to life the department of informational technology is the main developer and implementer and it cannot work without other branches, healthcare, transportation, education. We closely work with the departments that come up with uh, methods of work. And we do informatization and digitalization to make this process, make this controllable. So there are sectoral managers which understand the demands and needs. And there are, there's a certain division called active citizen, which allows the citizens to respond to changes in, in the city by using the application and report any flaws. Maybe uh, communal services are not working well. So we learn very quickly about that in every part of the city through electronic services that our Moscovites use while we're speaking right now, even during an hour, for example, while we're having this session, about 35,000 people use have used this serv service. 
electronic services are used by 7 million Moscovites on a daily basis. And this service allows us to have a responsive um, approach. For example, if hot water is off or electric there are problems with electricity, we can react and uh, make decisions depending on the calls. We can send our um, employees and control our employees what they do, how quickly they do it to eliminate the flaws that they that the citizens have. So centralization is the most effective way to look at the whole picture, not only in central regions, but in all regions of the city. As you know, Moscow has been expanded. We now have new regions that has been have been connected to Moscow and uh, we are not we care about those people too that live uh, a little bit outside of Moscow. Uh, talk, speaking of transport, to develop transport complex and developing intellectual transport system, intelligent transport system, we have connected all the hot lines, all electronic service into one core, which allowed us to see all transport flows going on any streets of Moscow and then plan the roads, parking, and electronic services for parking. We see the a number of parking places, parking spots, we see demands, needs, and the people can book a place or pay for the parking. He sees the he can book, he sees the application. We have a certain category of people who live in paid parking areas. So if he's a resident, he can uh, get some agreement with the city and have a um, simplified regime of for parking. For example, if another person from another region of Moscow comes, he pays more for parking. So... <coughs> This has enabled us to do this uh, uh, because we were able to collect the information. We understand how the service is needed and how the space is needed. How do you introduce this service technology? You, as the mayor office, you understand the needs of people. You are the generator of ideas, of uh, providing, formulating new services and uh, you build the technology so you know how to better process the statistics of uh, telephone calls and you know the needs, you know what would be the next step in uh, processing telephone calls, information, what you need to do. Do you do it on your own? Or when you understand that you need to digitalize uh, another district, you have an idea, you have the terms of reference, and uh, you, who is doing the work? Uh, your subsidiaries or you delegated to communication operators? That's a good question. Of course, we don't try to concentrate it on ourselves. Uh, the Moscow government objective is to facilitate, simplify, and improve life of people, but not build and do, and do not duplicate commercial companies. So there, we have lots of partners who work with us. These are commercial companies, communication operators that do the coding and building the communication channels and collect data for the government. According to the government contracts, long-term contracts that we come enter with our suppliers. In such a city as Moscow, it's not possible to get all the specialists in one place and uh, do all on your own. So we need to develop also businesses, and we invest uh, uh, money into businesses, and we understand that these are the jobs and uh, the living standards are improved. and. Uh, we improve the financial turnover in the city and the city collects more taxes. And uh, the city is the customer 
for such businesses. And then uh, such services are tested on the city, and the commercial companies use the same services as uh, the mayor office. And I as used to live in Moscow. Could you tell me who is the executor? MTS, Bilayan Megafon. We try to support the competition. And of course, we can get the better prize through the competition. But of course, all the largest operators work with us. Rostelecom, Megafon, MTS. In uh, Moscow, all infrastructure is owned by MGTS. And uh, working with all the uh, operators and making contracts with them. And we are developing the service model when the cameras are not owned by the city, but we control the quality of services in Moscow and the SLA services provided by operators. And we find them if we see bad quality of services. Oper operators find it very comfortable to work with cities because we have long-term contracts with them and uh, Operators invest in the city and develop, for example, medical or educational systems for CCTV systems. And operators find it profitable to invest in the city because the return on investment is guaranteed if the service is high quality. And the providers also uh, do the engineering support. For example, how we did the video surveillance service. This is not just the network of cameras. We understand that the cameras are in the housing and operators had to modernize their networks. And now every citizen in every uh, apartment has a optifiber, optic fiber. And uh, uh, operators were able to provide the digital TV, telephonia, and broadband internet to every uh, Moscovite. Okay, now that's clear, uh, but what's happening all over the world? Jonathan, can you tell us about Cisco experience in the world? What's happening in digitalization in other cities of the world? Thank you. So I think Alexander was talking about Moscow, and uh, actually the same is happening all over the world. Um, Smart cities is an important element, I would say, for every city administration, especially of the largest cities. Why it's an important element? Because what's happening now in the world, this is a global fight for talents. At every city, every country, would like to have the population as talented as possible that supports the development of the city and the country. And that people who live in the city would be, uh, would have good income, would pay taxes, and would be a good tax base for the further development of the city. Uh, let me tell you a few words about Cisco Royal and such projects. We don't have solutions for smart lighting or smart parking. Our focus is infrastructure for data transfer, for storage data, and for cyber security, and for protecting IT systems. Alexander said that the major strategy of M Moscow is to make s uh, life comfortable in Moscow. And since I've been living in Moscow for 30 years, I can say thank you very much, Alexander, first of all. We are not just partners, but are also a Moscovite, and I feel the quality of life, the better living standards. And uh, Barcelona is another example. It's a well-known city 
uh, for its uh, digitalization. Barcelona, as Moscow, uh, has uh, the same problem. That's the traffic difficulties in moving across the city. In Barcelona, it was really hard to get into the city and to move in the city. And I can say that in Moscow, they had a, the same problem. I don't know. Barcelona is much better now, but I don't live there. And uh, But we are in contact with the Barcelona administration, and they understand uh, that it was bad. Now it's much better. And in Moscow, it's also much better. If we talk about the needs of people, which services do you see are the most needed in other cities? Traffic, of course. Transportation traffic is important. What else? What comes after that? Well, you had a great presentation. Actually, you showed the different services and solutions. And I would say transportation, parking, how much time I spend on commuting to work and back. There is a also known city for digitalization, Rotterdam. But it's a port. It's a huge port. But they understood if uh, they would like people to live and work in the port, to go from work to home, it takes 1.5 hours. So that's really hard. So they uh, so they built the districts housing districts close to the port so that the transportation was optimized. Uh, education, health care, and environment, this is what is important. Thank you very much. Now we have the understanding what was important, what is important. And in Moscow, we have such understanding what is important and what is important for the world cities. How to project these needs on uh, Kazakhstan needs? Janat, in your opinion, if we speak not about the world, the specificities, not to talk about the average things all over the world, but what is needed in Kazakhstan? What do you think? What uh, digitalization services, smart city services are mostly needed in Kazakhstan? Thank you, Roman. Smart city in Kazakhstan actually shows the same needs. As the speaker said before me, we have the need for talents, of course. Currently, due to digital technologies, people are better informed. They have access to technologies and social media and different sources of information. And thanks to this good level of information, their requirements are higher now, and the Akimats, the city administrations, uh, need to build the communication with people better and get the feedback better to fill in the needs and ever-growing needs of people. I would like to give an example what was done in Nur Sultan. We have created a single contact center that enabled us to use different digital technologies. So we have nine ways of applying and providing information to city administration. And we were able to get a comfortable way of getting the feedback and work on the complaints. So that's a good example of good communication. And uh, that's how we control these services quality and improve living standards in general in the city. Second area, this is a more global thing. Cities now compete among each other. Not the countries compete, but the cities. And the cities compete for talents and for investment. So smart city is needed for us to help our city, Nur Sultan, to be more competitive at the city's market, attract talents. And we need these technologies to fill in the needs of uh, newcomers. 
uh, new citizens of the city and the guests. And we need technologies that will enable us to provide higher quality services and to show that we are improving standards, living standards in the city. And that uh, uh, refers to all the areas such as green technologies, energy saving technologies, uh, and uh, medical technologies. So there are two areas, I think, where Kazakhstan cities have the needs. First of all, this is the high quality communication between the administration and the, ci and the citizens. And the second, the technologies that are needed for improving living standards. Thank you. Thank you, Janat. Almas, what's your opinion about this? What Janat is saying, uh, is it interesting for Karaganda as well? The trends are all similar in all the cities. I think the needs are similar. There are some specifics uh, in Karaganda. For example, traffic jams and parking is not that burning issue because there is a bigger city and uh, not so densely populated. But we are focusing on the social area and education. Um, we have, for example, 400,000 users, active users, 400,000 active users of our application. So almost all our adult population is using this application of smart medicine. And we say that if, uh, uh, for example, all images, x-ray images, for example, they all get uh, into the application apl automatically. And the doctors can do this, and the, the users can do this. So we see a rise in uh, oncological diseases because uh, and, uh, the distribution of free medicines has been also changed because of that. So there are several areas of this uh, in uh, social transportation, utilities, and uh, medical. So we have also the plans to improve the safety of the cities, CCTV. We have about 5,000 cameras working all over the city, private cameras that we integrated into the single network. We are working with Kazakh Telecom on the cameras to be installed in the buildings inside so that we could uh, uh, could have notification only because of the certain events. We don't have to track all the cameras. So we do the programming, for example, for certain cameras. For example, there is a camera on the central square. For They will track only children entering the fountain area, inside the fountain. So for them, they won't uh, detect any other events. And so we need a synergy between uh, people and administration to work together because uh, the information gets stored very quickly and uh, people, uh, people's reaction is very quick now. And we understand that the methods, how we collect information, how we respond, they're very outdated. So it's the old regulations do not help us. A blogger with uh, uh, half a million Subscribers can get the information much quicker. I would like to give an example from my childhood. I lived in Taldekurgan, that's a small city, and there was a, a newspaper, and uh, they collected the information in such a way they take a budget of the city and would say, give me all the streets that were repaired, and how much money was spent on that. So they say that uh, children, if you bring a photograph with a crack in the street and children take the pictures and bring to the editor's office uh, uh, these photos and get 500 tenge. Next uh, issue is showing those pictures and uh, show how much money was spent and what's the result. So that's the social control. Now the speed of development is so quick. And uh, that's why our objective is to integrate all those systems and uh, the data collection should be integrated. Uh, call centers so, so that they are all integrated. That's what we do now. That's the main uh, objective for the year, to build a single center 
that will collect information of all kinds of uh, communication and uh, uh, be able to respond. There are um, available solutions in the world. We'll use them as the ready-made solutions. The operator is not able to know all the situation. There should be some simple software that uh, should clearly define who should uh, react to what. And uh, as the Moscow colleague said, we need just to track the trends and to see what is uh, important. For example, every month I receive uh, uh, complaints and I say for a single, for one place. So the trade is illegal all the time, every day. And uh, so we did this with the camera. We were able to control that. And so all our systems, such as um, medical, educational, safety, we need to integrate them. Uh, for example, why children need to get the medical certificates from the hospital to uh, their schools? It's not needed because this all can be done automatically, integrated. Now we don't have such a center, but by the end of the year, uh, I think we'll do it and we'll start the first pilot in Karaganda where we will test it all. Of course, there are issues, issues with financing, um, because that's a long-term return on investment. And uh, if uh, Moscow can spend a lot of money, but uh, Karaganda is not that rich. So step by step, we should be installing these uh, services. Of course, we have the issue with the IT um, professionals and uh, industrial IT professionals industrial industry has to buy ready-made solutions and they install them here in launch but they lack people and uh, even children at schools are not able to do something with their hands and we lack engineers children lack interest to learn something manual to do something manually and uh, even teachers are not available. I don't know. Before we had uh, such a, a lesson, but now uh, industrial enterprises say that everybody can read and write, but they are not able to do anything uh, by their hands manually. So, so I think we should improve our education. We should get back to some uh, training what we have lost. So. The major objective is uh, the uh, satisfaction of people. We will understand where we focus too much and where we need to concentrate our efforts on. In medicine, for example, we know now where we have problems in healthcare. We're in the initial stages there, and it allowed us in certain hospitals to get to number one places so we can serve, provide better services now, and we understand now better. So these are the main trends. In the speeches of last two speakers, we know that in Kazakhstan there is understanding that there should be a centralized body that understands the needs and demands of citizens and forms technical uh, base to satisfy the services. Kolnishbek, Maklik Bekovic, you built networks and you're the first country in CIS countries, Kazakh Telecom, build its own networks. So how ready is the company to provide these services uh, by local administration? Do you see the vision how it should happen? Will it start? Why are we in this market? This question always comes, comes up. We're a big telecommunication company. Uh, smart city market is a is, is, a, is very interesting. We showed you statistics for parking, statistics for other services. As a Kazakh telecom team, we understand that the biggest need, as shown in the slide, is smart home and smart cities. Every household which has a phone, ADSL, internet, our 
company invested in ADSL and GCOM and all apartment sector. 70% uh, of those households use our Kazakh Telecom, so the, this next need was the telephone, then there was the internet, then we, then there was TV. Now the biggest need is the safety. So for us, it was very important. Two years ago, we started a big project called Camera in Every Apartment Entrance. It was a business project. We saw that the, the need was growing. So having installed around 36,000, uh, we need to get it, this number to 64,000. So we see the need there. Our cameras uh, gave benefits. It's the decrease of criminality in, in uh, apartments. And some citizens, they say that they're loyal to our company, which is a good fact, good indication. Next, we are the shareholders in the cell phone business, cell phone provider business. So we can only use our mobile uh, forces. So we have some projects in certain cities, how we can use our cellular networks, the usage of SIM cards in cameras, the usage of new type of networks to uh, gather information. So the need of administration is that all social functions, as Alexander mentioned, we need to satisfy. So as a company, we're trying to harmonize ourselves with the needs that the administration has. I'm not talking about video cameras because it's a already a thing of the of the past or present and people are not happy with the cameras on the roads because they get tickets sent to their homes but the criminal level is decreasing in public places the um, investigation it also helps with the investigation of big crimes the new generation will face, as Almas says, no one wants to work with their, no one can work uh, with their hands. Few people can. As already, it's, as it has been said, the children cannot work uh, with their hands, but they can play on their computers. So it's their basic need for them. So children know how to use other services. So the children should be online always so this need is filled with our services in schools and kundalik uh, like a dire electronic journal electronic report card allows us to do that and the healthcare function provision of good services so it's the big data for us as a telecommunication company, we have clear understanding of the needs of the citizens, needs of the Akimats local administration. So every year we try to satisfy those needs. I think for us it's one of the biggest priority. It's to, it's to uh, not only to provide basic uh, services, but to provide big digital services that you can get from our network. Uh, thanks very much. Uh, what what services do you need? Do you think when we launch a service, when Akimat local administration has a need in a services, so the 
introduction of the service will be very costly, so we will need some funds. So this service is not a communication, it's not direct a communication service. It's not a major business for Kazakh Telecom. As Alexander already mentioned, we're attracting investments or we're using the budget money. Do you see any opportunities? So is should budget be the main thing when we think about the needs? There's a trend in the recent years. The private uh, public partnership, it shows the investments that go into some sector. The very interesting case was the storage services uh, state controls, for example, the consumption for the next five years, uh, as in Moscow. There is a group of investors that is motivated to provide these needs, to meet these needs, and to invest. Same goes for Kazakh Telecom. We do projects in some areas. In some schools, we, uh, for example, set up some lines. And we know that this will cover uh, the needs for the next four or five years. Also, there are some services like Sergei cameras. These are the basic needs. They're automated. This, people start to use them thanks to private investments. When the government invests, it can can exploit, of course, and the cost can be higher, higher than than if the investor would uh, pay. But he, uh, they get a guarantee. So this is a trend in Kazakhstan. This is the main driver of smart city development. Almaty, it's on my public transportation card. Then Sergei cameras. These forms help develop this sphere, and it shows the investments. The person that comes, an individual, he will come there and he will invest to get guaranteed uh, revenues in the next five years. Uh, thanks very much, Konosbek. Very interesting information. What I'm interested in is uh Ms. Mr. Hazem, when you were introducing smart city for Dubai, which is big city in the development of digital industry, they do they make huge steps help. What was the role of the operators? Is there a need in cellular networks? In, is there a need in smart? In is there a need in new services? How do you? structure that what's the operator's role in that we're here to talk about the digital economy and so far i haven't heard the word data being mentioned very much and i think when we think about operators yes connectivity is important and all of that but the biggest asset that operators have is how much data they actually have about the phones and where we go and what we do. And many times when we think about the digital economy, we only think about government data. That's not enough. That's not going to get you to where you really want to be with a digital economy. We've heard a lot of use cases where we're looking at taking something that we were doing manually and then using digitalization to do it a little bit better and gain some incremental efficiency. That's important. You know, if I'm going to be collecting garbage and then I have sensors in the, in the bins so that I can optimize the fleet, that's really fine. But to really add value, you need to start combining private sector data, for example, roaming data, mobile data, credit card data with government data. And that's when you really, as a city, start adding value to the digital economy. Some example use cases. Um,
Dubai right now, and we've been working with them on the strategy of the private sector data use and the policies associated with this. And we identified together with Smart Dubai, which is the central body in the city overlooking what all the other verticals do, um, a few possible use cases that use mobile operator data. Um, one, Dubai is built on tourism. It's very important uh, for its uh, economy. And if we are able to predict based on historic data, if someone coming from Kazakhstan, and I know a lot of people here like to go to Dubai in the winter, if we are able through roaming information together with credit card data, hotel data, to predict how a typical visitor to Dubai coming from Kazakhstan as compared to someone coming from the UK, in terms of where in the city they move, how do they spend their time, how do they spend their money, I'm able to target and customize my marketing campaigns so that they're very, very suitable to the tourists that will come and then I could get them to spend more money, spend more time in my city and contribute to the economy a little bit more. Another example where mobile operator data is, is gold is when we're actually planning the uh, mobility in the city. If I'm able to combine roaming, you know, the data from mobile operators and see how people through heat maps move around the city, and I am also able to combine this with um, car share riding data from Uber and the likes, I am able to better plan my roads together with the real estate data that I would have from the real estate developers, and I have my own city plan expansions. I'm going to be able to better plan my roads. So we are talking about something where I'm combining multiple data sets from different sources. Again, talk, think about what are some of the automotive vendors are doing right now. Um, they're thinking about combining all of this data together with um, you know, sensors so that if the driver is able actually, we're sensing constantly how good the driver pulse is, and if there is an emergency, I could also alert the driver, alert the ambulances and so far. So I really want to, want to take us to the next level to think about not only taking existing processes and doing them better through technology, but starting to think about wider sets of data, including mobile operator data, and think about how we can create new things, do different business models, create more value to the economy. Спасибо большое, господин Хазем. О, у меня остался вопрос к аудитории. Есть ли у аудитории вопросы, которые они... Thank you very much, Mr. Uh, Hazem. Are there any questions that the people from the audience want to talk about? Are we going to get a mic? Hello, Camila from uh, Nursa Town from uh, Policies Department. We're discussing very interesting topics. Smart City is a global, it's a little bit futuristic. It has to do and it's related to big cities, I think, maybe ev even our city. So I think how would you evaluate the prospects of development of smart cities? or smart towns or smart villages in Kazakhstan in the near future when what you are doing right now for the development to attract can become into small cities to so that it's comfortable for everybody. So this is the first question. Is it clear? A step by step. It's a question to everybody, so I'm interested. Now it's only in the in the big cities, the, those cities which can afford it financially. They already have the investments, and now they attract more investments, more people. But as for what 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 about the small cities, small villages? I'd like to talk about an interesting case. What we did last year. It's the 
a coal city 100 kilometers from here. We participated with a partner there, and it's clear that we it's a good project. It had good content. We took one city and we tried to to digitize all the main processes. So we got interesting data for people about people about light sensors about temperature. We have sen sensors for electricity consumption for water consumption but to enter a new city with these solutions it will take some time and the infrastructure of course the lines the networks we have 4g in all centers in all regional centers so we're working on uh, installing uh, high-speed internet so we were installing fiber optic lines in 10 residential places so there are about 2.4 million people will get access to broadband uh, internet so in the next four five years it will uh, trickle down to regional then to trickle down to villages And what about other people? Can other people answer too? I can talk about Moscow, how we work there in Kazakhstan. What's good for big cities? R&D, research and development of services, introduction of new services. It's a kind of a costly thing. And big cities have the opportunity to invest in the development and implementation of service and uh, putting that into practice so that this service is in demand it needs to give uh, comfort not only comfort but the benefits the the revenues Moscow also decided to to use those services in regions also different cities of Russia we need to understand that it's not the service that works in big cities not necessarily will work the same way in a small town depending on the population we need to understand the business processes of this service and how it is used the presence of specialists uh, that will maintain the service it's a problem in small towns but in Moscow we are moving in the direction of partnership we have operators then they provide those services um, in the next years so these services will be provided to small towns where they don't have technical spe specialists but they can get service not from a big city they can get a service from a big operator and this will be faster the role of big cities is very important distinguished colleagues we have a situation when we run out of time and so I'm sorry that we were not able to listen to all your questions and uh, I would request you to communicate directly with the speakers to ask your questions. I will be available here the whole day. I'll be also happy to answer any of your questions. Before we finish, I would like to inform you that there will be one more interesting session today that will be focused on cyber sport. And uh, you can see in the agenda where it is located. This is very relevant for youth, and we understand that it will be very interesting. And I invite you to this additional session that will take place today. Thank you very much to the speakers. Thank you for your great presentations. You have the materials that the organizers would like to leave with you. Please take them with you. Thank you. Thank you and all the best.